WC7600 Setup and Discovery. Hi everybody, today we're going to demonstrate how easy it is to perform initial setup and access point discovery on the Netgear ProSafe WC7600 Premium Wireless Controller. We'll be setting up the wireless controller with two of our ProSafe WM370 wireless access points. For demonstration purposes, we'll only use two of the WN370, however we can easily do the same with 10, 20, or more APs. To ensure the smoothest and fastest discovery possible, the WC7600 should be on the same Layer 2 subnet as the APs you're trying to discover and manage. Also, your DHCP server needs to support Option 43. Option 43 is a common requirement for access point discovery amongst wireless controllers and is usually found in enterprise class DHCP servers. If your DHCP server does not support option 43, the WC7600 has a built-in DHCP server which does. In this video, we'll use the built-in DHCP server. By default, the WC7600 has an IP address of 192.168.0.250. Since my network and your network does not necessarily reside on that same subnet, we'll need to log into the WC7600 and manually give it an address on our LAN subnet. As for the wireless access points, they'll obtain an IP address from our DHCP server by default, so all we need to do is to plug them into a PoE switch or power outlet. It's worth mentioning that the WN370 wireless APs used in this demo are powered by PoE only. So the first step is to change the IP address of my PC so that it too is on the 192.168.0 subnet. For the sake of time, I've already done that, so we'll just go right on ahead and open up a new browser window. Here we'll type in the default IP address of the wireless controller and log in with our credentials. The default uh, credentials are admin, password, all lowercase. And obviously in a real world deployment, you want to change that password to something significantly stronger. Once we're logged in, go to the configuration tab and then select the IP slash VLAN menu item. Here, we'll give the WC7600 its new network settings. Obviously, your settings may differ from what I use here. Once we're done, click Apply. Once we see the spinning icon, we can go ahead and close this browser window. The next step is to move our PC back to our LAN. And to do that, I'm going to right click on this network icon and change my adapter settings. Now, let's open up our browser window and log in again. Go ahead and type in the new IP address that we gave the WC7600. Log in. Next, we're going to go ahead and enable the built in DHCP server. It's worth mentioning that uh, before you do this, it's best to turn, turn off your existing DHCP server, otherwise, you may get some unwanted conflicts. Go to the configuration tab and then select the DHCP server menu item. Once we're here, click on the Add button, and we're just going to go ahead and enter in our DHCP server settings. Once we're done, click on the Add button. Now that we've set up our DHCP server, we can move on to Access Point Discovery. To do that, click on the Access Point tab, and you'll see a Discovery Wizard. Select the first option and click Next. Within a fraction of a second, the WC7600 has already discovered both our WM370 APs. Check both of these boxes and click on Add. 
and you can click on refresh a few times until the status here shows up as connected. This process usually takes about 30 seconds. For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and move forward 20 seconds. The status now shows connected, and that's it. We've gone from a WC7600 straight out of the box to discovering and managing two WN370 APs in about five minutes. It really doesn't get much easier than that. Thanks for watching.